just went out there recruiting. Uh, I thought Derek's whole thing about, go, go ahead, uh, recruiting. In all of my years in the business, either it's hard to find good people because business is open and nobody's leaving, or business is so bad they're afraid to leave because they got a good deal over there. I mean, in 40 years, I've never heard anybody say, man, this is a great time to recruit. There's so many people out there, they're just not my job. I mean, it's always a problem. And I understand a lot of new dynamics. I put up here a couple ways that I recommend you recruit. First of all, centers of influence. Talk to your team members. See, quality people flock together. People flock, you run with your type of people. That's what you do. If you're a winner, you're usually associated with winners. If you're a loser, you're usually associated with losers. That's kind of the way, my mom pounded that into me when I was, into her four boys. You know, you've always become who you're associated with. You've always become who you associate with. And so, if you have a great person, Serve, and I'm not just talking to sales, I'm talking about service, I'm talking about an admin. I mean, most admin departments have one lady that's as efficient as can be, and she's got you held hostage. Because she treats everybody else like dirt. But she knows things that you don't know. So we put up with it. And to me, you better solve that problem. That's going to, keep, that's going to really hurt you. So go to your team members and ask them. Say, hey, look, I need some help. We're looking for some quality people, you, you know, uh, somebody that can join our family. And not somebody that's out of work looking for a job. I mean somebody that's, that, that, that's happy where they are because we've got a better story to tell. Go to your team members. The next group you go to are your customers. I have never, never figured out Have you all bought a phone system lately? Everybody's buying phone systems. Now, if you buy a phone system, who's the type of person that sells a phone system? Who's the type of person that services a, 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 a phone system? They're just the type of people we're looking for. So go, you know, surely you all have 10 customers that like you and know you. I mean, go talk to them and say, you know, We've got a challenge. We're looking for good people. Who's been calling on you? And, and, and get names from, from your customers. Your customers are a wealth of, 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 of the, the criteria is, is they've got to know the type of people that you, I'm working, I'm working. They've got to know the type of people that you know, that you need, and they've got to be sold on you and your company. You have somebody that's those, that person, they can be a center of influence. And, and that, that's, that's where you find the people. Recruiters, I don't think you need a recruiter until maybe you're, oh, 100 million or something. And if you're 100 million, you got a lot of other problems than just being a recruiter. Now, the other one is the comebackers. And what I say to this, this is what, just talking with businessmen, during the pandemic, and right after it has slowed down, a lot of people came and stole some of our people and they promised them a lot of good stuff. And what's happened now is that they went over there and that stuff ain't happening. And they're unhappy. But they're afraid to come back to you and admit whatever. Give them a call. Take them to lunch. Just want to get caught up. How you doing? How you doing? And I almost guarantee you if you have to, I mean, obviously if you want to get rid of somebody, you're not going to but so, somebody that you really liked and broke your heart when they left, then give them a call, follow up with them, and you keep following up with them. Uh, I have some great managers uh, out in Arizona. Kirk Studebaker was there, and I, I pointed out every time I talk to Kirk, he, he's bringing somebody back that they lost. Every time I talk to Kirk, he's talking about somebody that he's kept up with for three years. Three years, take them to lunch, send them an article about the company. That's what they're, here's what I've observed from companies. 
The quality companies, hello everybody, everybody here. The quality companies will be getting at least 50% of their people from customers or team members. At least, at least 50%. Just think about it, if your people love working for you, shouldn't they be out there talking about it? <laughs> I had one company, the, the company that did the highest, they were down in South Carolina. Uh, South Carolina a company called Mom. They sold to Icon and T. Hooper. They have they kept track of everybody that was hired, where they came from. Seventy percent of them came from present employees. Where did your best people come from? Where did your best people? Think of them back home. I'll guarantee you, it was probably they knew somebody or or or, or, or whatever. It's got it's, it's a real interesting fact. Let's change the slide. Selection. Okay, you have to start out. You have to make a commitment. And I'm so sensitive about this because everybody talks. But I, I kind of do it. I, I mean, I'm embarrassed that this is it. But anyway, I'll stand up here on the chair. Here's the key, folks. Yeah, everybody, if nothing else, you're all watching to see if the old guy falls off. <laughs> Here's the point. If you want to build a quality company, you've got to hire the best players. You've got to hire the best players. Don't just hire some retreads. Hire the best players. And, and that sounds so easy, doesn't it? And yet, all over America right now, all over America, there's managers that are saying, or owners, saying to their managers, there's three openings over there. If you don't get them filled up by the end of the month, your ass is grass. Now, I don't talk that way. I do not talk that way. But some of my clients do. <laughs> that if you don't get those territories filled, and so what do they do? They go out and hire three, three people and they're filled and they're all, all right. Then what are they doing in six months later? If you don't get those comparators filled, and it goes on and on and on. The outcome, the outcome, the outcome is not to hire people. The outcome is never to hire people. The outcome is to get the right person in the right job with the right relationship. And if you don't have that, go on until you find that person. Well, but there's nobody, but there's no good people out there looking for jobs. <laughs> then they're, they're everywhere. You're just not out looking for them. You're not talking to your people. I mean, uh, just a quick story. I'll oh, forget 520. <laughs> I had a client, and he told me, he, he was vice president of a big sales organization. He required every manager every month to turn in, right along with their forecast on sales, who, he, who they were recruiting. And he wanted to know where they got them from. And they better have one of them coming from their barber. Think about it. What do people do in a barber chair? What do people do in a beautician's chair? They talk. They puke. That's what happens. So go, go contact the barber, go contact the beautician, sit down with them and emphasize to them, I'm not looking for somebody that, that you, you, you know, it, it's just, you, you know, struggling. I, I want somebody a little bit, see, oh man, I wish I had my flip chart. Everybody dips, everybody dips, everybody, I'm the happiest person you will see. I am the happiest, I'm the luckiest guy you will ever meet. But let me tell you, when I'm sleeping in O'Hare Airport on some chairs, trying, because my plane got stopped, and I'm a hot shot big time consultant, and I'm lying there at, at two o'clock in the morning trying to get home, I'm thinking, oh man, what the world am I doing this for? I'm dipping, everybody dips. So just because you contact somebody and they're not interested right now, you stick with you stick with them and they will dip and then you'll get them. Everybody dips. If you spent two hours, two hours a week recruiting, you'd have more candidates than you could ever dream of. 
but you got to go out and recruit them. And I agree. I don't understand LinkedIn and all of that, so I can't really comment on that. Uh, I don't know if it's great or bad. I, I, I'm into this man. He's, you know, he's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, just I have to check. You look him in the eye. You feel him. Okay. Now the can-do. Find yourself a behavioral evaluation. They're all over the internet. Uh, get yourself a behavioral evaluation, and any candidate for any position run a behavioral evaluation. They're all basically based on the four linear system, and they will tell you about their aggressiveness, their sociability. Now, on, on a salesperson, you want a high score on aggressiveness. Okay, now aggressiveness means that they're in control, and that's what helps them persevere. On a tech, you're looking for somebody that has sociability. Otherwise, they might fix the machine, but they don't fix the customer. On an admin person, you're looking for somebody, and they will come up on, on, on the evaluation that's into detail work and me repetition. It tells you about their behavior. And so you want to run something so that there's a match. People work at jobs if they're comfortable at it. If they're not naturally comfortable doing the job, they're not going to do it. If they're not naturally comfortable prospecting folks, they're not going to go out and prospect. That's just the way life is. On the will do is look at their history. Get to know their story. Get to know their story. Technique, take you back to when you got out of high school and tell me your story. Now they'll tell it to you in about five minutes and then you gotta keep going back in and keep questioning them about certain things. See, here's what's happening all over America. I, I, you know, is the booze free? Yeah. Yeah, well, there'll be plenty left. <laughs> Catch this all over America. You know, not, not today because it's St. Patrick's Day. Everybody's not rolling. Monday, all over America, this is going to happen. You've never seen me do this before. <laughs> Somebody comes in for an interview. And hi, how are you? Welcome. And then, and then the first thing is we have an icebreaker, don't we? we you know, and, and, they, and they, if they've been trained, they ask you about the picture on the wall of your family. <laughs> and so there's a little smoothing for about five minutes. And then what do they tell you? Ask questions. Boy, if you're going to be a great interview, you've got to ask questions. So I say, well, listen, tell me a little bit about yourself. And they talk, but as I'm, I'm kind of listening, but man, I look at them and I think, wow, this is just who I'm looking for. They look like us. They smell like us. They talk like us. So I'm kind of listening to what they're saying, but then I'm so I'm kind of excited. I'm in and around. I say, hey, listen, let me tell you about the job here. And I'm just going to say sales, okay? I'm just going to say, uh, but I can do service, I can do admin. But uh, l l listen, l let me tell you, we're looking for somebody that's highly competitive. This is a tough job. This is a tough job. You've got to really be, there are a lot of competitors out there. And you've got to be tough. And you've got to really persevere to handle it. And we need somebody that's high energy. Because, boy, with all the competition and everything, we need somebody that's up in the morning. And you know what? We work hard. We really work hard here. Now, tell me a little bit more about yourself. Well, you know, first of all, oh, we forgot one. <laughs> you got to put up with rejection. There's a lot of rejection. I mean, I, I want to be honest. That doesn't drive you crazy when somebody says, I want to be honest with you. You mean you've been lying all the rest of the day? <laughs> I want to be honest with you. You know, th th there's a lot of rejection in this job. Oh, now tell me about yourself. Well, first of all, I wrestled in high school. I'm really a competitive guy. I love competition. And you know, I really love to, to over, overcome things that are really tough. I, I like to tough it out and persevere. And, and you, you know, when I wake up in the morning, I just can't really wait to have some rejection so I can overcome it. <laughs> now I'm sitting over here, yeah, this is happening all over America right now. And I'm sitting there thinking, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, he came as a carpenter the first time. Now he's, now he's coming as a, a, a popular salesman in Sarasota. 
board. <laughs> now that looked stupid, didn't it? Didn't that look stupid? And that's going on all over America right now. We tell them how to role play us. We tell them all the, because we want to be honest, open and candid. Oh man, forget it. And I don't have time not running a workshop. You got to ask questions. When in doubt, just pause and they'll keep talking. I mean, and, and learn their story. And when they say things, instead of saying, we work hard here, or they say, I like it, well, describe what working hard means. The big questions are, tell me more about it. In addition to that, elaborate on that. Those are the questions you're asking. Expand that thought. I mean, well, boy, I like to work hard. Well, what does work hard meaning to you? Well, man, I mean, at 9 o'clock, I'm there. I mean, then I, then I get home at 5 because I want to spend time with my family and have a balanced life. <laughs> oh, man, they want a balanced life. Guys, be crazy. Guys, be crazy. What else is up there? Team. Do they really? Do they have our values? Do they have our values, and do they have our work ethic? He said, just because they look like us, or, or just because they played linebacker for some high school football team, doesn't mean they're a team fit here. And I will say it again. I alluded it to an imaginary bars. I don't understand why there aren't more women salespeople. I've never understood that in our industry. I think it's a tough, if I owned a company, I might have all women. Uh, the old Zeno, any of you remember the old Zeno days? Fast Freddy, yeah, and Paul Revere. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> they were terrible. Uh, but anyway, so do they fit on our team? And I'll kind of let you work through that. Let's turn the page. 